So as we embark on a 500 gallon reef tank overhaul and we're going to be replacing the rock in that system with a sculpture done by Condi, he's now picked up a brand new gasoline driven power washer. It's my new Christmas toy. It's his new Christmas toy. Uh, so we'll be able to blast the you-know-what uh, out of all that uh, new live rock that's all stacked up and in boxes underneath here. So stay tuned for the update on a 500-gallon reef tank overhaul. Okay, so we got most of the rock unboxed, getting ready to uh, start pressure washing it and then begin to formulate what we're going to build as far as a sculpture. We've got a basic idea in mind, but um, Show them all the different shapes. it kind of organically grows as we assemble it. So uh, let's uh, get to work doing some sculpting. So with all the rock pressure washed and cleaned of all the uh, death that occurred during its transportation and that's the result of Condi's new um, pressure washer, gasoline powered. We're now in the process of trying to create a basic structure uh, in the tank. We've got uh, tape on the ground that kind of mimics the footprint of the tank and so we're trying to get an idea as to uh, what we can build and kind of the basic framework and so it's a matter of drilling the live rock using um, carbon fiber pins to secure it uh, together. And, uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, challenge and feat. So what would you say that the hardest part of doing the sculpture is? is knowing where the bulkhead, where the bulkheads are underneath the drain and the return and where the uh, where the power heads are going to go. Without <laughs> me knowing that, I, you know, this is, you know, you know. <laughs> and, and that's that's basically the, the truth here. I mean, without me knowing where you're going to, this, this is the foundation right here, you know what I mean, after this. When I'm there, the magic will, will finish happening. It's not the final version, but... The hardest step in any project is the first. This applies to assembling a filter system's plumbing or creating a coral reef rock sculpture. You want to have, where you have space, like, you know what I mean? Up here, I want to create, like, the archway, you know what I mean? But once things get going, the process, the pace, and the magic begins to happen. So kind of hard for the camera to pick up the uh, 3D aspects of this, but um, there's kind of a biggish cave opening in through there with a skylight in behind it. Over here, there's kind of a cave-ish area there. It's a bit of a plateau that we'll build across here. The sides will continue to come up as well as the back, but Condi's issue is we don't know where the uh, intake and the return coming through the bottom of the tank are. Um, so it becomes a bit of a challenge to try to custom build something to fit when you don't know exactly what it is you're fitting. Uh, so it'll become, as I've always used the phrase, a more organically grown sculpture once you actually climb inside the tank and everything's starting to fall into position. So you can kind of get an idea as to uh, what we're trying to build here though. And we've got uh, quite a large selection of pieces left over 
to work with, so uh, it'll be pretty awesome once we uh, get closer to it. Those are, those are my uh, top pieces over there. The black over there. Oh, yeah. Be the... good. Yeah, I'm pleased so far. Okay, so here is the tank as it currently is. Um, it's just basically a raked pile of real reef rock, just kind of roughly stacked up. Um, hair algae, uh, the corals themselves that are in there are not doing well. There is a scattering of fish in there which are currently hiding, although there's a pair of black perculas. Um, the goal today is to um, drain the tank and remove all the rock from the tank itself. Uh, we'll then end up uh, polishing. I think there's some scuffs or scratches on the front panel. Uh, we'll then refill it with fresh water, literally add bleach to bleach the system, and then uh, two or four weeks down the road come back and start doing the actual uh, sculpture itself. So the pro project involves uh, getting the rock out of the tank, which will uh, require somebody uh, to go inside the tank that we're going to hand the pieces over the edge of the tank they'll come into these uh, trash cans here where we will then in turn wheel that stuff out here into the uh, the back where we can uh, try to drain as much water from it as possible put it in the boxes that the uh, original live rock arrived in uh, and then wheel it out to the van of which we'll then try to uh, sell or resell the um, real reef rock. Uh, this being the filter system, that's a uh, uh, Red Dragon uh, protein skimmer. It's an external version. Seems to be an okay skimmer. Uh, this being the sump itself, uh, we'll probably pull that rock out of there. Um, this being the main uh, water pump. Actually, I think the main water pump is back around there. A couple of large hammerhead golds. There's a, a pleated canister in the system which I'll well, probably pull the pleat itself from and a chiller of which everything is contained in this nice cabinet here outside. Um, we don't plan on making any real modifications to the filter system. We'll use it as it is. What we're going to end up doing is um, installing an apex system to monitor and control certain aspects uh, we're also going to be changing out the lights in the system from those uh, handful of AIs that we'll continue to use, but we're also going to be adding Kessel lights into it as well. So, let's uh, get to work and uh, start uh, draining this tank. Okay, so we're starting to take the rock out of the tank. Um, yeah, get, let's push this right out over here. Condi's using the tongs for the moment to take out the corals and removing some of the larger pieces over the top edge. Hands them to Scott, who in turn will start putting them into the uh, container here. And that ultimately gets wheeled out to the patio where it'll end up getting uh, reboxed, drained and reboxed. So the rock is brought from the trash can out to these boxes that the uh, live rock for the sculpture originally arrived in. And this is real reef rock. It's an artificial rock. And we're going to be selling that off. So it may not take as long as we anticipate because we've already got half the tank emptied already. They brought Speedy Gonzalez today, so you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, got just about all the rock out of there. There's a few pieces at the bottom plus the sand. And we've managed to do it without having to climb into the tank so far. So, we'll get the rest of it out. We've got uh, corals in buckets. 
a few choice a choice rock with uh oh there's some more over here uh, corals on them hi there my name is jim stein and you know me as the la fish guy well i also wear a couple of other hats one of them is the jellyfish tank called the jelly aquarium and the third is myfishtank.com I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Aquariums, living works of art that are relaxing and beautiful. However, tell someone you have one and they will have one of two responses. Aren't they a lot of work? Or, I had one once and everything died. This is where Neptune Systems, a pioneer in the aquarium industry for over 20 years, has been changing the discussion with their monitoring and control systems. It was in 93 I got really big into uh, aquariums and reef tanks in particular and uh, there were some controllers on the market. However, they were just, you know, outrageously expensive, you know, well over a thousand dollars for, you know, rudimentary kind of control. And so I, I decided that, uh, you know, my background in electrical engineering, I could make my own controller. Made a prototype of it and took it to uh, uh, some of the fish clubs that I was in and uh, showed some of the folks there and they wanted to buy them. There was kind of a, a, a dream or a glimmer of hope that it could be something bigger, but I always thought, you know, you sell, you know, 10, 20 a month and that's kind of where you're going to top out. Despite the allure of Silicon Valley right in his backyard, Kurt decided to see what his prototype could really do. We started advertising on Reef Central and we did third page size and FAMA to, to full page and, you know, the phone just rang off the hook. It's like, wow, advertising really does work. And, and, and so then I knew that work out the kinks in the product and the next generation really could be, uh, you know, quite strong. Realizing that his strength was engineering, not marketing, Kurt reached out for help. When I came to Neptune, I knew I had to soften the product. I had to soften the company away from being a technical, geek kind of oriented product into something that everybody could use on their aquariums because I thought it would make them more successful and I really wanted to get it into their hands. We felt 2016, this is the time to bring out the next Apex. The design of the outside of the Apex was just as important to us as what we did on the inside. So the new mounting system lets the Apex flip up and you can easily see where all the cables go. It then drops back down to keep stray water from entering the electronics. Underneath are many of the same connectors found on the previous Apex, things like switch inputs and your variable speed ports, and even Aquabus, so all of your existing modules and accessories will work with this Apex. We've also added salinity monitoring as well. And of course, for monitoring the health of your aquarium, there are the connectors for pH, ORP, temperature, and there's even a connector for 12 volt input for power outage situations. So it's actually quite amazing how many things we put into this new Apex to monitor the health of your aquarium and to control everything that you need to control. But what we really did was listen to all of the customer feedback and put some things in there like Wi-Fi. So now you have Wi-Fi if you want to use it or you can use a wired connection. One touch uh, firmware updates, we now call it the Apex operating system and with one touch on your mobile device, you can update it. With the Energy Bar 832, you can see how much power each and every device on your aquarium is using. You can then monitor that for a day, make some changes to say your lighting schedule or your temperature, and see how it changes the next day. The Energy Bar 832 has three built-in one-link ports. This means you can connect up with one cable our wave pumps, the dose to dose elements in your aquarium, and future products that we'll come out with. On the new energy bar, there are indicator lights that show you when each and every outlet is on or off. And they also will blink if you happen to be pulling too much current on any one outlet so that you don't overload a circuit. We know that tens of thousands of aquarists around the world count on the Apex as a critical component to their successful aquariums. 
This new Apex gives us the platform to continue innovating for our customers so that they can be more successful with less hassle. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. So now as the water level gets way down, Connie's being able to reach in there with the net and retrieve a number of the fish. We've got them over here in the buckets, big container so far. Get your chronos all hiding around the over or the output lines there. With or without rock decorations or pipes in the tank, it's always a challenge to catch fish from. There can be only one rock in the tank, and you know that's where the fish will be hiding behind or <laughs> under. There goes the ghost. And it doesn't help when you're leaning off the top of a ladder and reaching down yeah, I was about to go in there head first, right? 60 <laughs> inches holding a net by the end of its handle in your yes. hand. The more limber and shorter Scott jumps up onto the ladder and reaches down to try his hand at catching a few more of the fish. Maybe it's his center of gravity that makes it easier for him as opposed to the long-legged, long-armed Condi. But not to be outdone, Condi scampers back up to the top of the ladder. Let me just get him at the pump. And reaches into the tank to grab the last few fish. All right, so now it's time to get the sand out of the tank. All the water is now gone. And I think what Condi's going to be doing is making a scooper of sorts out of a bleach bottle so that he'll basically go inside the tank and be able to scoop uh, the sand out, probably hand it up over the edge, and then we'll put it in one of these trash cans here. So, now that all the water is out, it shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, getting inside the tank. The challenge would be is physically getting inside the tank. And the even greater challenge would be getting back out. Condi eagerly scales the ladder, steps over the edge of the tank, and lowers himself down inside. Sucker fish. Want to pull the pump out of there? Get that pump out of your way? Give me the uh, bucket. This tank is 60 inches tall. What? It's 48 inches wide. Oh my gosh, we've got a human in our tank. Sucker fish. <laughs> and 42 inches you front to back. So Condi has <laughs> adequate room to move around inside that tank. Bucket by bucket, Condi scoops and lifts out the sand to Scott, Jim. who tries to get me involved. But I've already positioned a container for Scott to dump the old dirty sand into. And while this sand is biologically active, it also holds in itself debris as well as nitrates and phosphates. No. And so the old talk. dirty sand no. won't be going back into the tank. Once we set up the new system, I'll be introducing new clean sand. All right, you can tell me when I can return. I'm going to do the return pump and I think maybe the closed loop, get any water that's in the closed loop out too for a split second. Okay, so Condi's going to be going in with the uh, shop vac so that he can um, clean up all the sand uh, that remains at the bottom of the tank. There are a couple of reasons why we're going to extremes cleaning out all the remaining sand. First, it's part of the cleaning job or clearing out of the tank, ensuring that all the unwanted debris gravel and sand, and in particular, remaining nutrients, is no longer left in the system. Two, 
Condi plans on polishing out the viewing panel of the tank, which he'll use a buffing wheel to do so. And any granules of sand picked up by the buffing wheel would cause circular scratches in the acrylic material, thus increasing the amount of work that would need to be done. So with the inside of the tank now cleaned out, Scott climbs out of the tank, allows Condi to climb inside with his buffing wheel, various polishes. So we now enter the next phase of the uh, aquarium overhaul. Um, there are a few scuffs and scratches in the front panel, along with a lot of calcareous algae buildup on the sides. I'm not so worried about what's on the sides, but we're going to take advantage of the fact that the tank is currently empty and we're going to polish out some of the scratches and scuffs in the front of the tank and what this involves is a wet dry type sandpaper and essentially to eliminate scratches you sand down the surface of the acrylic to meet the bottom of the scratch and then with a series of other finer sandpapers along with polish you end up polishing those uh, scratches or scuffs uh, that you did to uh, eliminate the scratch, you end up polishing those out. Uh, part of his first challenge is determining where the scuffs and scratches are at. But uh, it's usually a, a frightening process, especially the first attempt, because you're using even though it's a series of fine wet dry sandpapers uh, it does cause a little uh, concern when you go in there with the initial scratching and scraping but it does eventually disappear So now we're at the point where we're trying to address the coralline algae that's grown on the side panels and with a little bit of uh, vinegar and water we can wipe it down and that'll soften it up but he's still got to get in there and scrape on it a little bit but at this point we're just trying to get it off so that you don't see it. We're not really trying to polish the sides or anything like that. Now that we've got the tank polished out we're going to go in and rinse it out get the front panel uh, cleaned up. Still want to take and apply some um, vinegar to the side panel to try to get some of that calcareous algae off there, but first attempt at uh, rinsing the tank is what's happening now. So as the water goes in, there's a sump pump in there that um, uh, takes it out at the same rate. So we've now gotten to the point where we've got most of the uh, coralline algae on the side walls all cleaned up. It's time to uh, rinse out the inside of the tank to get rid of some of the uh, remaining salt uh, or sand dust, uh, bleach water, coralline algae debris. We're using the sump pump to try to draw that out. Once all of that uh, dirty water is out of the system, uh, we'll then refill it back up with fresh water, completely full. Uh, add bleach and let it run for the next uh, two to four weeks just to sterilize the system. The filter system has been drained of its water. I've got some new filter socks in there. Uh, I guess we should have considered, uh, I guess I'll actually make it a point to do that now, take at least that collection cup off the protein skimmer and get it cleaned out. Um, and then this is the uh, refrigeration unit over here. I already checked, there is no pleated cartridge inside that uh, canister. A large hammerhead uh, gold pump. And uh, again, the sump with the protein skimmer. And I believe it's other main filter pump. Also a hammerhead gold is down here. And I think those pumps are supposed to do like 5,600 gallons an hour, but um, 
the plumbing's been done in a manner that they're really quite restricted. So. So we're now to the point where we're uh, slowly beginning to fill the tank up with rinse water. We can begin to pull the uh, painter's tape and everything that we've uh, placed on there to protect the tank while we're working on it. We can begin to pull that off and I uh, got uh, uh, vinyl drop cloths and uh, packing blankets and more paper all over the floor. Make sure it's all protected. And I've been uh, slowly cleaning up and getting stuff placed over under the side of the house so we can uh, easily get it loaded into the van. Up. You hear me? Sitting around supervising. <laughs> As the coordinator of this project, I brought in Condi and Scott, who are more skilled at certain aspects of this job. That leaves me to become their gopher. But at the end of the day, it's I who is the one the customer writes the check to. Okay, so water is now coming from the tank into the filter system. You can kind of see it splashing into the, the socks there, so we'll just wait until... Okay, um, okay we've got a little bit of time. We'll just wait and let this sump fill up, um, since at this point it's no issue if it's too full or whatever. We'll fill it up high enough because it's probably going to be another uh, two weeks at least before we come back. Um, Although, with all this dry air and wind, that may cause some evaporation, and I may end up getting a few text messages, but um, anyhow, we're just about uh, ready to plug that pump back in. All right, so the water pump for the filter system is now plugged in, and it should be circulating water through the system into the overflow and out to the filter system. Okay, so we've got the tank filled up with fresh water. There's bleach in there. It's now bleaching the system, sterilizing it. It'll be another two to four weeks probably before we get back here to drain the water out of the tank and then start building the coral sculpture in there. So until then, always keep moving forward.